All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at what a state machine is and how to write a finite state machine in Java. And I've got the calculator pulled up here because this is one example of a state machine. You have a program that can operate in several different states. And here we're in the standard state. You have a scientific state, programmer state, and several other states. This is the same program, just operating in different states. Another example would be like a video game. You have your main menu, you have your loading screens, you have your different levels, you have your options. Those are all different states of the same game. And so we're going to be looking at a state machine diagram and then how you can write a state machine in Java. This is a diagram of a Pac-Man ghost. Everyone's familiar with the Pac-Man game. And we have five different states for a ghost. The ghost starts out in the rise state. It's in the middle of the maze there, just bouncing around. Whenever this condition is met, it's going to change to the next state. Once the time limit has been reached, it's going to exit the room and it's going to start chasing the player. And from the chase player state, a few different things can happen. The player can eat the power pellet and then the ghost is going to change to the run state, or it could catch the player, the player dies, and then it's gonna go into this move randomly state. And so this is how you follow the diagram. The arrows indicate which states you can reach from your current state, and each state has a name, and then the arrows also have a condition that has to be met in order to change from one state to another. So that's how you read a state diagram. So we're going to be coding this Pac-Man ghost. The first thing we're going to do for any state machine is start off by creating a class for our state machine. I'm going to make this an abstract class. And the name of the class is just going to be state. And we're going to create some static variables in this class, one for each state in our diagram. So I'm just going to use the first word in each state. We're going to have chase, run, rise, move, and die. So static, state, chase, run, move, rise, and die. And then we need one more, and this is going to be our handle to whatever state we are currently in, and I just call it Current, that will represent our current state for the ghost. Next we need two different functions and some state machines can have up to five functions, possibly even more, but we're going to start off with just two. We're going to have enter and we're going to have update. The enter function or method I should say is going to set up everything needed for that state. If this was, let's say, a player with health, you would want to set that health up at maximum, or you may want to cue the music, or you may want to center the mouse pointer. Whatever happens when you enter a state, you're going to write all of that code inside the enter function. Now, whatever happens while you're in that state, you're going to write in the update function. This is just an abstract class, so these are only here for the polymorphism. The next thing we're going to do is create a class for each state. So we'll say class chase extends state. And we'll create a class for each state. So now we have our classes, we're going to fill out our enter and our update functions and we'll start off with chase. Now we're not actually writing the Pac-Man game, so I'm just going to be using the console to get input and to change states. And for each enter function, we're just going to do a print line. We're just going to print out which state we are in. And 
now in the chase state. For our update method, the state machine is going to do a few different things. It's going to handle whatever needs to happen while we are in this state. So for Pac-Man, it would be doing the pathfinding, it would be moving the ghost around, it would be updating the animation and things like that, the collision detection, all that good stuff. And then the state machine is also going to be checking for the conditions that would transition it from the chase state to the other states. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to print out what options are available. We're going to get input from the user. And then if a change is needed, we're going to change to the next state. I'm going to start off by displaying what options we have available. So if we look at the diagram again, from chase, we can have the player die or the player can eat the power pellet. So those are our two options. Player dies and player eats power pellet. Now to get our input, we're going to need a scanner. So I will create a scanner here. And I'm going to take my input as a string just for validation purposes. String input equals s.next. And now that we have our input, we can check which state we need to transition into. And I'm going to use a switch statement for that. We have case one. Don't forget to use double quotes if you are using a string. In case one, the player dies. And so when the player dies, we're going to change to the move state. So player dies current equals move. And then we're done with this function so we can return. And then case two, player eats power pellet. And that's going to send us into the run state. So we would write current equals run and return. And then we can have our default case. We'll just print out some error message here. In order for our error message to serve any purpose, we need to run all of this in a loop. So I'm going to step back up here to the beginning of update and write a little while loop. And this can just be an infinite loop because our return statements will get us out of the function. And you can format your code to make it look all pretty. What I'm going to do now is copy both of these methods and paste them in our other classes and then edit them to match that class. So we'll start with run. We're going to paste this in here. Instead of saying in the chase state, we're going to say now in the run state. And our options are going to change as well. So we refer back to the diagram. From run, we can go to player eats ghost and then we die or the power pellet wears off and we go back to chasing. So those are our two options there. Player eats ghost. And power pellet wears off. Now, case one, player eats ghost, we're going to move to the 
die state and the pellet wears off, we're going to move to the chase state. And the rest of this is all the same. So now we can continue this. We'll go to move. From move, we only have one option. From move, the player respawns and we go to chase. That is the only option here. So let's update our inner method. We're now in the move state and we'll scrap this option here and this case too. And instead of player dies, it is player respawns. And we don't go to move, we go to chase. And this is how this works. So I'm going to finish filling out the classes, referring to the diagram, and then I'll show you how to set up the state machine in main and we'll test it out. All right, now that all of my classes are filled out, we need to instantiate each one of them. So I'm going to start by writing state dot chase equals new chase. And we'll have to do this for each class. And now we need to set our reference to our current state. A good diagram will have an arrow pointing to the starting state. We don't have that here, but we know that the ghost is going to start in the rise state. So that's what we will set our current reference to. And now the rest of this is pretty simple. We're just going to call enter and we're going to call update and our state machine will function just fine. And here's where our polymorphism is going to take care of us. It's going to know which inner we're talking about and it's going to know which update we're talking about. So let's test it out. And I have an error somewhere. What did I do wrong? I have two runs. I should have a rise. Now it will run just fine. Here we go. So we start out in the rise state. We only have one option here, time to exit, so let's put that in. Now in the chase state, we have two options. The player can die or the player can eat the power pellet. And so you can pick one of these options, whatever options are available to you, and the state machine is gonna hop around from class to class and handle whatever needs to be handled in that state. The beauty of the state machine is, it's very modular, it's easy to go back and add new states, if we decide we want to change our ghost up, it's easy to break up the state machine into teams because you can have different members work on different classes. It's also super efficient. Whenever we're running in a state machine, it's only concerned with whatever state we're in right now. While we are in the die state, we are not concerned with chasing Pac-Man. We don't have to write if statements for any of the other stuff the ghost could be doing. The program is only concerned with what happens in this current state. So that makes it very efficient and uh, no clock cycles are being wasted on other things that the ghost could be doing.